Hi there, I am Dr. Joanne Yanez, and I'm the Executive Director for the Association of Accredited Naturopathic Medical Colleges. I'm going to be talking to you today about something near and dear to my heart, uh, that is happiness. And I think, you know, it's so important for future professionals, people who are going to be in the healthcare industry, to really understand how to find your own personal happy. What does that look like? How do you maintain centeredness, groundedness in the midst of all of the stuff that happens through the course of studying to, to be in the healthcare profession and then ultimately becoming a practitioner. Um, so I wanted to talk to you today just about a few things. So, all right, number one, if you're here, you're thinking about a new career. Um, so that in and of itself can be stressful. Career stress, choosing the right path for you. What am I going to do with the rest of my life? That big question everybody wants to know the answer to. Um, how do I balance that career choice with work and life and have some sort of semblance of, of a life that is outside of work? Um, what do I do to prevent burnout? Uh, and so all of this, and especially that last one, burnout is such a buzzword right now. Um, so we're going to be covering, I'm going to be covering resiliency, gratitude, and a little bit on positive psychology today, all with the goal of understanding how to be more self-aware and proactive against common stressors that could lead to burnout or even worse. So what's that first thing that I talked about? Um, well, you know, introduction, introduction to this world of positive psychology, of happiness, uh, we are the sum total of everything we are and, and everything we've seen and everything we've told and, and forgotten. It's all there. Um, and so all of those influences are there. So it's really important. And that's a paraphrase of a Maya Angelou quote. Um, but it's really important to understand how all of that interplays with our day to day. Um, so I'm going to share with you a secret to being happy. Shh, can't tell anybody. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that as we keep going. So what is that positive psychology thing that I talked about? So in, it's really interesting. In naturopathic medical school, uh, we learned about diagnosis, we learned about treatment, we learned about conventional options for, for therapies, and we also learned about integrative approaches. Um, but so much of the model of diagnosis and treatment was focused on disease. And so, you know, you've got a patient, they have symptoms, you diagnose those symptoms, and then you come up with a, a diagnosis, a plan for that diagnosis because they're sick. Well, what do you do with folks who um, want to be healthy or how do you optimize that health and that wellness? And so that was an area that drew me to naturopathic medicine and one that I started to see a thread in throughout the course of our education was focusing this focus on the positive. Like, yes, we're, we'll deal with the patient and we'll work with them who's got metabolic syndrome or uh, diabetes or cancer or heart disease or and you know anxiety or depression or any myriad other numbers of issues. Yes, absolutely. But there was also this other piece of how do we keep people well? How do we teach people to stay healthy? And so that's where this whole bit about positive psychology, which um, positive psychology was founded, a uh, pioneer of positive psychology was a doctor by the name of Martin Seligman. And this arose in recognition of traditional psychology was focused on the mechanisms and science of illness. And so instead, Dr. Seligman strives to understand happiness. How do we create the science and study of predispositions of happiness? And so that's really where positive psychology niche is. How do we nurture our inherent genius, our inherent talent, um, and make normal life more fulfilling? So uh, there's literature supporting this with uh, chronic pain and depression and geriatric medicine and insomnia and anxiety to name a few, but ultimately what we're cultivating with positive psychology is the positive um, and looking at the, um, you know, the, the good things and, and finding those pieces that we have to be grateful for. So there's another word that I'm going to throw out at you, and I'm sure you've heard it before, and that is gratitude. Uh, Gratitude is another practice that uh, I, I really do feel is really important in understanding its role in health and its role in mental health. Uh, 
So what is gratitude? Gratitude is derived from the Latin word gratia, which means grace, graciousness, gratefulness. So what's so good about gratitude? Well, <laughs> gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, um, feel good in those good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, uh, and build strong relationships. Um, there's been a, a developing body of literature around gratitude and what some of the outcomes are. And it's actually showing to be pretty positive. Uh, there was one study that showed young adults who practiced self-guided daily gratitude, having higher levels of alertness, enthusiasm, determination, attentiveness, and energy compared to uh, a, a group that focused on the hassles and, and other issues in life. Um, there was another one, uh, another study of weekly gratitude journals resulting in more exercise, fewer physical symptoms, more optimism. Um, and then one last one that was also really interesting was with children. And children who practiced grateful thinking had more positive attitudes towards school and their families. And so there is this building body of evidence around being grateful and what that does to uh, our own biochemistry and how that shifts um, how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about our whole environment. And so if you take that knowledge into the workplace, uh, you know, how many times do you, you hear coworkers, oh, work stinks, oh, I hate my boss, or, you know, and, and that all of that negativity permeates, it's going to permeate yourself, it's going to permeate your interactions with other coworkers and possibly even with your patients. And, you know, you can feel that when somebody has that negative uh, cloud over their head and that energy, um, you, you can feel that. And so, you know, we, we like to be around folks that can see more of the positive and bring that out in us. And why wouldn't our patients as well? Um, so, you know, I think as we think about healthcare practitioners again and burnout and, um, you know, resiliency and, and all of those factors that play a big role in how you're going to perceive your job satisfaction, uh, how you're going to perceive happiness in your life and your career, and all of these tie together. So I hope that all of this is helpful. Um, we have some tools at the Association of Accredited Naturopathic Medical Colleges on happiness, on finding your own personal happy, uh, and how you can guide that with patient interactions as well. Um, one of those that we use is a happiness quiz. And so, you know, I'll just read off a couple of those questions. Um, the first one is, do you spend time with people who love, appreciate, and encourage you? Do you face your problems head on? Are you always honest with yourself about everything? Do you make your own needs and happiness a priority? And are you polite to yourself? I, I always think about that one uh, with the noise, the chatter that's inside our head. Uh, how do we talk to ourselves when no one is listening? Are we, you know, we make a mistake, do we call ourselves stupid in our own head? Oh man, that was stupid of me. All of that talk, all of that positivity also has to start with you too. So I hope that all of these things start to kind of bubble up some ideas in your head about how we can uh, be more attentive to ourselves. One other tool is mindfulness. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is paying attention in a very specific way on purpose and non-judgmentally. Um, and that non-judgmental part is really important. Um, again, that whole self-chatter, that brain talk inside your head, um, all of that is really important to, to take hold of. And so what is mindfulness? It's just paying attention. It's being aware. And so if, I, if any of you have ever been stressed, how do you feel that? How does that show up in your body? Is that a headache? Is that a tightness in your stomach? Is that running to the bathroom? Um, what does that stress look like? Is it running for a bag of chips? Like what is, what is stress, how does stress show up for you? And so as you get deeper and deeper into your medical education, you're gonna understand, oh, you know what? I'm wearing my shoulders for earrings right now. 
uh, looked at myself in the mirror. I must be stressed, even though I don't realize they're up there. Okay, let me go get a massage. Let me practice some self-care. Let me go talk to a friend. Let me do all of those things that fill my cup up. What's the cause of this stress? Can I get, can I get to the root of the issue um, so that that can go away and the stress isn't there? Um, so all of that is important. But if you're not self-aware, if you're not practicing mindfulness, you're not going to know there's a problem until it's really big. And so all of those pieces are important. So there are mindfulness exercises that people can do. One that I like to do personally is right before bedtime, um, just kind of focus my thoughts right here in the middle of my head, slow my breathing down, and just do a real quick scan of my body. Am I feeling any pain, any tension, any stress anywhere? And it's, it, it serves two purposes. It helps me but A, know how I'm doing and, and how things are showing up in my body, and B, relaxes me so I can go to sleep. Hidden bonus. Um, so there are lots of different ways that you can uh, manage your stress if you are feeling stressed. Uh, we have a little self-care bingo uh, exercise on our website uh, that uh, kind of pokes fun at, at self-care, but it really provides some ideas. You know, what are the things that fill your cup? And you know that for you. Is it dancing? Is it journaling? Is it meditation or prayer? Is it calling a family member? Uh, is it playing with your animals or your children? Whatever it is that fills your cup uh, is what you should really be making sure of, of taking time for every day. Uh, and so I think I've left you all with a few keys to the secret of happiness. And um, I hope that that was helpful. Uh, I want to just leave you with a Maya Angelou quote, love life, engage in it, give it all you've got. Love it with a passion because life truly does give back many times over what you put into it. And so I hope that what I put into today will rub off a little bit positively on all of you. And uh, if you have any questions for me, I am Dr. Joanne Yanez at the Association of Accredited Naturopathic Medical Colleges, aanmc.org. Thanks so much for joining us today on uh, this little talk about happiness.